Now Esau harbored a grudge against Yaakov because of the blessing which his father had given him. And Esau said to himself, Let but the mourning period of my father come, and I will kill my brother Yaakov. You can see this is a repeating theme in Genesis. It's essentially brothers fighting and brothers hating each other. This is Torah 101. We're going to look at various uh, midrashim on this verse, and they are extremely in, uh, interesting, even for the non-Jew, and I would say even especially for the non-Jew. It is not because you are the most numerous of all people that the Lord desired you and chose you, speaking to Israel here. Rather, you are the least of all the people. It is not because you are the most numerous among all nations, and it is not because you fulfilled more commandments than they. For the nations do more commandments that they were not commanded than you, and they magnify my name more than you. Very interesting. Far from the, uh, and it says in Malachi, uh, for, f for from the rising of the sun until its setting, my name is great among the nations, and in every place incense is offered to my name, even a pure oblation. For my name is great among the nations. But you desecrate it when you say the table of the Lord is defiled, and its special food is treated with scorn as if it's like ordinary food. Rather, you were the least among all the peoples. Rather, because you diminish yourselves for me, therefore I love you. It says, I have loved you, says the Lord, but I have hated Esau. It also says, I will hear, heal their veering and love them voluntarily. My soul has volunteered to love them, even though they were not worthy. And it goes on uh, even further. Some very interesting uh, quotes here. I highly recommend you check out this Midrash. But now we see Cain. Three men came evasively when they were giving teshuva, like they needed um, Hashem. There was always a condition, and they were Cain, Esav, and Manasseh. And it doesn't take much thinking to see how these three are connected. My sin is greater than I can bear. Therefore he said to him, Sovereign of the universe, is then my sin greater than all of that of 600,000 Israelites who will sin before thee in the future? And thou wilt forgive them? Asaph, concerning whom it is written, Hast thou then but one blessing, my father? And Manasseh, who at the beginning called to many gods, and only after he had not been answered by them, finally called to the God of his parents. Now these are the enemies of Israel. The wicked are cursed since they conspire against Israel. And here's why. Each one claims to outdo the other in his devious plot. Esau describes Cain as have, having been foolish since he killed Abel during Adam's lifetime, enabling Adam to replace Abel with other children. He, Esau, was going to wait to kill Jacob until as, after his father had died, and Jacob could no longer replace, uh, be replaced by Isaac, siring any other children. Pharaoh considered Esau as being foolish, since he had overlooked the fact that while he waited, Jacob himself had a chance to sire many children, thus ensuring the survival of the Jewish nation. He, Pharaoh, would not uh, go about in this way, but he would kill the Jewish males as soon as they emerged from their mother's womb. Uh, Haman, or Haman on the other hand, considered that even Pharaoh had been foolish, since the latter had not realized that when the Jewish girls would marry, they would multiply the children being considered Jewish in Jewish law. Hence, he decreed, death for all Jews. In the future, Gog and Magog will consider all former enemies of the Jews having been fools for having ignored the fact that the Jews have a patron in heaven who may come to their rescue. Hence, Gog and Magog planned to first contend with that said patron, being God, and only afterwards to attack Israel itself. Interesting. So they're going to like argue against the mm, the existence of God, and then come after the Jews. This is why 
the verse in Psalms was quoted uh, against God and his Messiah. God is reported as smiling, saying to Gog and Magog that their undertaking is both foolish and arrogant since they have no idea how heavily outnumbered they will be when God employs his lightning <laughs> and other things. The serpent co when the serpent cohabited with Eve, it infected her with its pollutant, which in turn became mixed with the seed from which Cain was born. According to the Zohar, this pollutant has remained an integral part of man ever since. And then they go on. You can read this very interesting source. While it's true the pollutant of serpent of the serpent spread throughout the generations the greatest concentration was found in Cain and his descendants later on this pollutant was concentrated in Esau and Jacob remained untainted by the pollutant until his encounter with Samael <laughs> <laughs>